Hello, Dion here with Viking Roof Spec. So Viking Roof Spec are New Zealand suppliers of waterproofing membranes and systems for roofs, decks and below ground waterproofing. We provide our systems only through our Viking approved applicator network. We provide training to our approved applicator network at our facility in Auckland, where we train them for our torch on, Enviroclad, our rubber membranes, as well as PVC decking. We spend an entire day on every membrane type, talking through the building code, substrate checklist, the correct detailing, which they practice on these modules, and just generally quality assurance as well. Now, this is stage one of our training. We provide stage two, which actually is assessment of their workmanship out on sites to ensure they're installing to our correct specification. This is important when it comes to things like our warranties, particularly our Viking full system warranty. We love to help you designers out too, um, giving you the best advice. Uh, we, I'm typically talking about um, keeping risk out of the design and perhaps how we can design roof falls within parapets without the need for internal gutters. And by doing so, we're reducing the risk, we're saving height and certainly keeping the roof simple, we're saving any construction time and cost. Now, please, as always, the best advice that I can give to you is in the earliest stages of your roof design, give your waterproofing supplier a call. Whether that's us as Viking Roof Spec or, or another supplier, give us a call, we can help you out. Um, we know the typical situations and we can give you the best advice in detail. So here is a roof. Um, this has been um, waterproof with our Enviroclad waterproof membrane. It works very well. I've got a little red cross here because this roof has been designed with a lot of internal gutters within the middle of the structure and also around the parapets from the roof here. Now every cut and fold is a potential risk point for any waterproof membrane. Um, so it's really important to have the best installers on the job when it comes to these situations. Voroclad has a wide sheet membrane with minimal uh, joins, so the sheets are three meter wide or 3.6. So that reduces the risk in the roof by minimizing the laps. Here is a drawing from E2AS1, figure 64. It gives you the minimum dimensions of, a, of an internal gutter, and that has been uh, 300 millimeter wide and 50 millimeter deep. The 300 millimeter width is important because you need to be able to fit clamped outlets into an internal gutter. Uh, incredibly, internal gutters only require one in 104, whereas roofs, membrane roofs, require one in 34. So roofs are the less risky point gutters are the most risky point. So here is a beautiful photo um, of a lovely home in an ideal location. Um, internal gutters have been used around the perimeter to keep this profile edge very low, which I know is a real driver for designers and it looks terrific, I understand. So perhaps gutters may be needed in this situation. Uh, if they can be avoided, please do, perhaps consider going to external spouting. So gutters can be detailed, they come at a cost, and that is um, potentially at risk, so again, important to have the right waterproofers on the job, and also in time to waterproof and construct. So there's the cost there. Here is a um, plan view of a roof with a nice wide gutter around the perimeter, which is good, but unfortunately, sumps are used. Now, I'm not a fan of sumps, and I'll show you why shortly. This internal gutter here has been detailed by this young gentleman. The time it's taken him to waterproof this gutter, he could have actually waterproofed the roof can you close them a lot quicker. Now here are sumps. Well, I'm not a fan of sumps. So, you know, over the years, you get to inspect a lot of roofs. Now, none of these roofs have been leaking, but they have the potential to leak um, because these sumps are holding water. And they're holding water because the sumps end up gathering a lot of rubbish around the outlets themselves. Fortunately, this one has an overflow, so the overflow was in use at that point. Here's another sump. Believe it or not, there's actually an outlet in the middle of this. And so this outlet, uh, which this roof had been up for less than 12 months, this outlet was actually not in service. Again, adding elements of risk. Now, sumps are very good at catching rubbish. This sump, I've taken a photo of my driveway at home. Um, this is where sumps do work because the sump captures all the rubbish. And then as the water rises, the clear water will go through a side exit pipe. Now, sumps in New Zealand don't have side exit pipes for roofs. 
Um, all the outlets are in the base, and um, this is where they can be a risk and why they don't work on roofs. Here's what does work. This is a quite a simple design for into external spouting. Nothing can stop or inhibit the water getting to where it needs to get, that is to the external of the building. So no overflows needed, very simple, very safe design. A commercial building with a very simple, safe design falling to two points here and here to external spouting. Nothing can hold the water back. Here is another beautiful uh, roof here with the Amboroclad. Water is falling towards the middle of the building, but it's falling to the exterior of the building here. If you're curious as what these are, we actually have a TPO weldable rib for our Enviroclad. And so we can match the colours, whether it be our white, our grey, or our colour palettes with Enviroclad, we can provide these TPO weldable ribs. Uh, here is a way of falling without internal gutters when you're within a parapet. So there is actually an outlet and overflow at this point here. So it's a matter of shaping the roof as you would, uh, I like it to create and falls as you would in a shower tray. Uh, your shower tray at home will have an outlet to, to the corner or to the, to the middle where everything's falling towards that single point. I'll show you how that works shortly. Again, another home. There's a home here with falls going to the outlets here and here, simply shaped without internal gutters. Now, this is an example of a typical roof design. Very simple, obviously, to keep the illustration simple. This roof is 20 metres long here by 7.5 metres deep. Within that 7.5 metres, we have a 300 millimetre wide gutter. So the roof falls at 2 degrees for 7.2 metres. We stop before the outlet. We drop down into the middle of the gutter here, so I've saved some height by falling to two points. We drop to the down into the uh, gutter by 50 millimetre. Then we travel at 1 and 100 to the outlet. So that gutter costs us 150 millimetre. So overall, this height requires from the high point of the roof to the outlet itself, 390 millimetre. Now, here's an ex another example of the same roof dimension falling as I propose. So we're level here and we're level here. The roof fall is two degrees all the way to the outlet of the 7.5 meters. So set two degrees is one in 30 ratio. So 7.5 meters divided by 30 equals 250 millimeter. That's our point there. So these other two dimensions here, the ratios will work off that 250 millimeter. So work after this ratio here, you take the length of that dimension divided by 250 millimetre will give you your ratio of 40. If that uh, length here was 15 metre, then that ratio would likely drop to 1 in 60. The one to watch here is actually this longest fall here. This is not a valley. This is just an a indication of the longest area of fall. And so I would never want that to drop below 1 in 100. And in doing this, you're actually showing compliance with E2. Your constant watershed, None of your falls fall below 1 in 100, which an internal gutter does, and you've got your 2 degrees fall. Um, depending on your dimensions overall, your width here versus your length and this diagonal, um, you might, to create uh, the right 100, 1 in 100 fall here, you may need to slightly increase the 2 degree fall here, but you can do it, or you might just add further outlets as I've done here. So what you're doing here um, is actually not creating a valley, you're creating a parabolic curve. If you can imagine this joist here is level, this next joist or rafter is um, dropped a little bit lower at this point, and then along this length here, every joist will just drop a further um, 10 millimetre in this example. If the joist or rafters were ten, uh, 400 millimetre apart, every joist would drop 10 millimetre until it got to the outlet, creating that parabolic curve. This is an isometric example. Uh, again, it's level here and level here. Every joist would just drop incrementally towards the outlet. Showing here that that longest distance should not fall below 1 in 100. Very simple design. Uh, another part of the message here is very important to stick with the system that you're um, specifying. Uh, you can't specify stainless steel or aluminium scuppers, for example, with TPO. With TPOs, you need to be able to weld to the outlet or clamp to them, as this case here. This scupper here is a TPO weldable scupper, E2AS1 compliant in size. It's 200 millimeter wide, 
it's actually 80 millimeter um, deep here. So that's an E2 compliant size. We also have a overflow for this size as well. So in summary, um, please keep it simple. As I've shown you before, we don't need to in detail internal gutters. In doing so, we can minimize a lot of risk. We can also increase uh, falls above our internal gutter falls, and we perhaps can save a lot of height in the structure as well, as I've shown you. And please give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. We're here to help, and we're working from our home offices. Thank you.